James Randi has passed away. Uh, so today's show officially is dedicated to him. And uh, we can only hope he's uh, harassing a bunch of psychics right now or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Daryl, welcome to the show. I know that you wanted to be on and, and kind of talk about some stuff. Right. I have already voted, by the way. I was good. Got there, and I was kind of surprised how long the line was on a Thursday afternoon for voting, which bodes well for getting out. But yes, I want people to vote. I wanted to talk about something I think is kind of pervading our, our system, our culture, and our political structure right now. Mm -hmm. that I don't see people really understanding or, or putting two and two together, so to speak. I'm not, I'm not saying people don't know history, but I do want to talk about history a little bit in a different angle. Mm -hmm. And let's go back to the founding of our republic. And we can just say that from the very beginning, slavery was an issue. Slavery was not even questioned, and Christianity was right here with it. And going even farther back, with the explorers of North and South America from Spain, Christianity was right there, killing people, enslaving people, giving diseases. And in my book, The God Virus, I even talk about how diseases work with religions, mm -hmm. which we're seeing right now uh, with <laughs> churches having uh, COVID spreading events, basically. Yep. So so all that's all the background. This nation was founded on white supremacy. And that's my that's what I want to talk about today. And when you understand how deeply it's embedded in our culture mm -hmm. and in our even our legal structure, it 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 frames something that's important this November for for Election Day. Let's let's start kind of with the Civil War. The Civil War had unfinished business, in my estimation. And interrupt me here anytime. Yeah, if, okay. if you've got some. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll preach on if you're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> Watching the clock. <laughs> but why would why would millions of people go to war in 1861 men men and the, with support of women for and, and and put their lives on the line except as an ideology and that ideology was white supremacy mm -hmm. there was an ideology that was embedded in southern culture and what i want to say is that that ideology did not die with the civil war and in fact the civil war was a was a war about white supremacy and, and, you know, to various degrees, every component of that war dealt with the notion that whites are superior to all other all other groups. Mm -hmm. And I hesitate even to use the word race because I don't think there's much of a well, we'll, we'll go. That's another another, <laughs> that's another show. <laughs> but what what happened at the Civil War was that the white white supremacy simply reorganized itself brought in the Ku Klux Klan, brought in other kinds of voter suppression, which we're mm -hmm. seeing today, Yeah, vote, voter suppression. at For a period of time, right after the Civil War, during Reconstruction, until, until it was stabbed in the back, Blacks actually voted to such a degree that they were electing non-whites, Blacks to, to office, even congressmen congressman and and uh, at one point there were 20 to 30 Black congressmen right after right. the Civil War, yeah. And some and some senators, which mm -hmm. yeah, which hasn't happened since uh, Jim Crow got started and right. the Ku Klux Klan intimidated and all that. So fast forward to today or in recent time, and there are people out there that so strongly believe this that they are taking on the cause of the statues of Robert E. Lee and those kinds of people. Yeah, and, and they're not admitting that Robert E. Lee was a was a traitor to this country. He's, he took an oath of office when he joined the United States Army, when he went through West Point, and he violated that oath of office by siding with the South. Why are we putting statues up to traitors? Mm -hmm. Unless there's an ideology that supersedes that, and that's the ideology of white supremacy. Exactly. And what we see today is that there are people in our culture right now that would easily go back to that time and place, and they think they will do anything to make sure white supremacy rules this this land. I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And I, I want you to know that the no matter what party it is or who the people running, if they can't disavow white supremacy and all the ramifications it brings into our culture, mm -hmm. then they are they are behaving exactly like Robert E. Lee. 
because that's what Robert E. Lee espoused. That's what all the generals, I mean, look at all the generals that got statues put up. We weren't oh, putting- I grew up in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I grew up surrounded by that. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, right. Yeah. And a lot of those statues went up during Jim Crow. They didn't grow up yeah. right after the Civil War. They went up later when the myth of the lost cause came in. Right. And there's just so many myths and so much we have to re deconstruct today. And one of those things, and most important, is right now, we have to challenge white supremacy. We have to challenge it every place it shows its ugly head in this culture. And the place to do it at this moment is go vote. Yes. You can get out and march. You can get out and give money. You can do whatever you want. But the most important thing is get out and vote against those people who do not and will not disavow the white supremacy that this entire country was founded on. I so fully agree with that. That's my sermon for today. I love it. I love it. This is the kind of sermon I'm about on Sunday. All right. Good. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for sharing, Daryl. I'm right there with you guys. Get out and vote. We know that not all of you are stoked about, you know, the options on the ticket right now. And I feel that. But think about it this way. We're picking our desired opponent here. We're picking the person that we want to go up against for the next four years. And we've seen how it's worked out with the person currently in office. So keep that in mind. Um, all right. So we are going to jump into some calls. I do want to remind everybody we do have a couple open lines. Um, and the sooner you call in, the longer conversation we can have with you. 